हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम अदिति टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू रीड अ फिक्शन बुक टू यू नेम्ड फॉर एवर इज जस्ट अ वाइल हुज ऑथर इज शुभम सिन्हा चैप्टर फाइव वानी शब्द आई एम हेयर कम कैच मे इफ यू कैन अ लिटिल गर्ल ऑफ अराउंड नाइन टू टेन इयर्स वॉज लाफिंग एंड शाउटिंग एट मी वाइल सी वॉज रनिंग इन द फील्ड आई कुड हेयर हर गिगलिंग्स रिंगिंग इन टू माई एयर लाइक अ बेल हर रेड कलर फ्रॉक वॉज फ्लॉन इन द एयर while she was running i thought she was almost flying on her head was a black hair band which blocked her curls from falling on her beautiful eyes i'll catch you ani you can't run from me i laughed while running towards her i knew she will not be able to outturn me for long suddenly she started flying in the air towards the sky as if someone was pulling her up from the clouds slowly she rose high very high in the sky I thought I could catch her I jumped and jumped again but I could not No don't go don't go I started crying and disappear I wanted to hold her Goodbye Shug take care of yourself I will always be watching you she said from up there she waving her hand and disappeared in a wall of light I woke up in a jolt covered in sweat and panting the table clock showed 3:30 a.m. same dream again i read in an article that we can remember only a 10% of our dreams but it was so vivid that i can recollect every second of it i keep seeing her since that unfortunate event it had been 4 years since she has gone from my life forever ani was my best and only friend since childhood we practically grew up together as we were neighbors her father was a scientist in the r and d pharmaceutical company that belonged to a business tycoon we have always been in the same school and class she was the best friend everyone would wish for when we were in the 9th standard one day she told me she was going to delhi usually her dad only used to come rachi taking time out from his work but this time his boss was throwing a party where his family was also invited she said it was an important day for her dad she left with her family the next day but after 2 days we heard that there was a car accident in delhi there were no survivors the whole family died i couldn't believe my ears she vanished in a flash i cried for days my mom consoled me saying that wherever she will be she will be at peace and will always be watching you eventually my life moved on with time but her memories were still there with me She was my best friend after all. I used to have these kind of dreams every now and then. I rose up from the bed and drank a glass of water. I tried but I wasn't able to get much sleep after that. I felt a part of me was gone with her in that a ball of light. Chapter 6 Love at First Sight. Sanskriti was gone from my life and I thought it would be easier for me. but i was wrong the guilt of leaving her like that was eating me from inside i should have given our relationship some more time this thought was creeping my mind my 10th grade was done and i got a 8.2 cgpa in boards this grading system started from the year 2009 8.2 was not an excellent grade but still it was satisfactory one mom and dad were also okay with my result but in that one year some changes had happened from the sai greek boy I changed into a confident rock star with Virat and Gaurav. I performed on several occasions in school in that one year. We formed a band and we named it Shade. I used to be on vocals and they both played guitars. We became very popular in a very short period of time and girls had started recognize me in the school now. They used to come to me and talk. But this glory was short lived as we three got separated in 11th grade. Gaurav got admission in Delhi Public School in Science Stream. Virat took science in our school only and I chose commerce so we all moved on to different paths it was not that we were no more friends but surely it would not be the same as it had been and it was sure that our band would break so we decided to perform for the last time together in school we made some pamphlet written sets last show and stuck those to some of the places in school where most people would see it the show was on sunday in school auditorium We took permission from principal and invited all the teachers but we hope no one turn up because evidently the amount of fun is always inversely proportional to the number of teachers present 
Till 2 pm, we arranged everything, set the amplifier, connected all the speaker in the auditorium, and we were just waiting for everyone to turn up. By 3 pm, the auditorium was jam packed. We did not expect such a gathering. I saw Sanskriti in the crowd. She smiled at me, and I smiled back. This was the first time we interacted in any way after 8 to 9 months of our breakup. We came on the stage after 10 minutes. I grabbed the mic and shouted, What's up, guys? and the whole auditorium cheered. I felt on top of the world. As you all know, this is the last of our band. So this is dedicated to all of you who supported and believed in us. I started the show with song Sunona. As I started the first line, I could hear the crowd clap on the beat. I choose the last song to be Yad Aayenge Ye Pal. Just as I started singing, the whole crowd started to sing with us. I believe it was an emotional for everyone as for us. At 5.30, the show ended and after that, everyone came to greet us before leaving. It took almost half an hour for the auditorium to vacate. Virat and Gaurav went backstage to arrange all the equipment and I was at stage unplugging and packing the guitars. You sing really well. I am a big fan. A voice can from behind. I turned to see a girl wearing black sleeveless top and blue jeggings standing near the podium. She. I remembered seeing her sometimes in the corridor where our class was. She was in C1 section, I guessed. Thanks, I replied with a smile. Can I help you in arranging everything? She asked with such an innocence that I wasn't able to refuse. Oh, okay, sure, I said. I am Priyushi. By the way, she said while extending a hand. Shabd, I said, grabbing a hand and pulling her on the podium. While doing that, her face came very close to mine and we paused for 2-3 to three seconds, like in the movies with my hand on her waist. Oh, okay. Hmm. So put that guitar in that cover. I said while breaking that awkward yet romantic moment and signaled her towards the electric guitar. Till then, Gaurav and Virat also came out from the backstage. I introduced Priyoshi to them. Gaurav was continuously winking and smiling at me and made the whole sense even more awkward for both of us. I could see that Priyushi looked at all his new sense and was embarrassed. It was around 7 pm. We decided to leave as our school was in the outstreaks of Rachi, making it a little unsafe to travel at night. I booked an auto to come to school as I had to bring all the equipment with me and Virat and Gaurav came on Gaurav's bike. We left our amplifier and equipment at school but still it was very difficult to do triple riding on his bike as we were carrying two guitars with us. So I was looking for an auto for me but at that time the chance of getting an auto on that road was almost nil. Priyushi came from behind in her scooty. At this time you don't get any auto here. I'll drop you. Come with me. She said. I looked at my friends. She is right. You go with her. We will meet tomorrow at your house. Virat said. I sat behind her on the scooty and she started riding. The road near our school was very smooth, so she was driving as fast as she could. I was a little afraid and I, as I didn't expect a girl to ride like this. She pulled the brake suddenly once. My hands went on her waist automatically in order to stop myself from bumping on her. Then quickly withdraw my hands. I'm sorry, I said. It's okay, she replied. It was the second time I had put my hands on her waist today. She must have thought of me as a complete loser who was trying to take advantage of such a situation. She dropped me in front of my home. Where do you live? I asked while getting down from her scooty. Kishore Ganj. It's not very far from here. She replied. Yes, I know where it is. I said. Hmm, I would have surely invited you to my house. But to be frank, I don't know how my parents will react to it as I never brought any girl at home. But yes, I owe you for this lift. I added without thinking that I have made a fool of myself once again. Well, I know myself. I am capable of doing this to me as frequently. Yes, you do owe me one. So let's meet for coffee tomorrow, if you are free. Tomorrow is Sunday, by the way, she said with a smile. Okay, done. I was enjoying it, frankly. It was very surprising for me. I surely was getting a lot female attention from the time we started performing, but no girl was so upfront to ask me out like this ever. Well, technically, I should have done all the things which she said. First, she gave me a lift. Then I touched it accidentally and pretended to be sorry and shy. And after all that, she asked me out. But who cares? I was enjoying it all. 
so we exchanged phone numbers and she left so this is the part 1 consisting of two chapters i hope you liked it and it is understandable to you thank you so much for listening it and next two chapters will be uploaded tomorrow at 10 pm till then like share subscribe and support me thank you